Thank you very much. Here are my disclosures, and they won't impact anything I'll speak about today. Obviously, as you just heard, the recent publication of the guidelines will be the major component of things that I'm going to talk about today, specifically impacting the areas of acute surgical problems. So as the intro of this session says, and there's about one in 500 uh, non-obstetrical abdominal surgery needs in a pregnant patient. Uh, that's the incidence that we commonly see. If you look at the literature, you can see the frequency that certain abdominal emergencies occur that may necessitate surgical intervention, the most common of which is acute appendicitis. There will be another talk about management of acute cholecystitis, but small bowel obstruction and ovarian pathology are also common areas that need to be addressed, and those are addressed in the guidelines. Specifically, here are the guidelines we're speaking about. We know that the laparoscopy is safe, and now the actual preferred modality in many areas of management, in particular in the acute abdominal urgency, with the goal of having the intervention be timely and benefit both the fetus and the mother. Specifically, when we talk about the acute abdomen or the acute abdominal issues, we talk about acute appendicitis and being equivocal. Obviously, imaging is limited. The availability and use of imaging is limited and may be problematic in the pregnant patient. All things equivocal, if the decision is to confirm or rule out appendicitis, the surgeon will have to weigh the benefit of a negative lap versus the negative or the uh, inability to take the patient to the operating room and address the problem. A delay in diagnosis is more likely to lead to fetal demise than the negative lap. Guideline number eight suggests the role of laparoscopy with regard to acute abdominal diseases. And what they have identified with this is that the general benefits are available to non-pregnant patients as they are to pregnant patients with regard to less pain, less risk of wound infection. But there are also specific areas that benefit the pregnant patient. In particular, there are less risks of thrombosis, venous thrombosis and embolism. Uh, pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state, and as a result, laparoscopy benefits in this circumstance versus an open approach. And in fact, using laparoscopy allows the individual to use the scope to a look around the gravid uterus and limit manipulation of the uterus, thereby limiting uterine irritability and leading to less uterine uh, likeliness of preterm labor. Number nine has to do with uh, the role of laparoscopy with regard to the trimester. And it's clear that it's safe to do laparoscopy with acute appendicitis even in the late third trimester without necessarily inducing a, a early uh, delivery. Uh, but it is safe to initiate laparoscopy even at that late state. Naturally, the challenge would be with regard to positioning of the patient if you are going to perform laparoscopy. Patients that are supine, that are late in their term, unfortunately cannot lie supine. And as a result, the patient will have to be turned on their left or right side. The challenge, of course, is, is the patient in the full decubitus position may not provide an adequate exposure for insertion of ports. And so potentially positioning them supine and then airplaning the table to the left or to the right would potentially be a benefit to allow for access and avoid compression of the inferior vena cava. I think you heard just now about the insertion of the first trocar and the changes throughout pregnancy and how one should adjust the first trocar insertion. CO2 is safe to use in this environment and the guidelines have shown that there are no major concerns even at the typical levels of 15 millimeters of mercury that we use. 
but monitoring is ne uh, needed, potentially a little bit more monitoring than we would use in the standard patient. Fortunately, arterial blood gases are not needed. The guideline search found that end tidal CO2 monitoring is adequate, uh, but CO2 needs to be monitored routinely to make sure that there aren't higher levels than normal. VTE prophylaxis, as I suggested, is important, especially in these patients who are pregnant because it is a hypercoagulable state. The drug of choice would be unfractionated heparin if one is utilizing chemoprophylaxis. Early mobility is obviously facilitated with minimally invasive approaches, and mechanical prophylaxis and early mobility may be sufficient if one is concerned about the role of chemoprophylaxis. Specifically with regard to appendicitis, one has to recognize that throughout the pregnancy, the location of the appendix changes. It goes from the right lower quadrant to frequently in the right upper quadrant as we approach the later stages of the pregnancy. And as a result, the potential port placement will need to be reconsidered. The fundal height, certainly for the initial port, will impact that port, but the additional ports should be reconsidered as you attempt to perform typical triangulation that we attempt with laparoscopy. When it comes to solid organ procedures, obviously uh, those two can be performed. Some of these are emergent as well, uh, specifically with regard to uh, the splenectomy. Uh, there are issues with regard to antiphospholipid syndrome as well as hereditary spherocytosis, and these procedures have also been proven to be safe. Adnexal masses uh, can occur in as many as 2% of pregnancies. Fortunately, the majority of them resolve and are potentially functional early but lose their function later and disappear. The persistent ones do have the potential for being malignant, but even in those circumstances, close observation is typically the approach that is most preferred. Laparoscopy can be used for further diagnostic purposes, but usually waiting to partuition is more appropriate in those circumstances as the risk of malignancy is relatively low. Another surgical emergency that can occur here in this picture on the right side of the picture is a torsion of the adnexa. Fortunately, the majority of these do not lead to serious uh, issue, but in some circumstances, Necrosis does occur, and in those circumstances, the necrotic tissue should be removed. Many times that can be done laparoscopically and does not require a conversion to open. However, there are circumstances where the material has become so engorged or the amount of debris is so significant that a small laparotomy may be needed to successfully complete the resection. So in conclusion, Laparoscopy is safe in pregnancy even in the acute scenario. We do need to consider the changes within the anatomy and the geometry of the abdomen, especially when we're dealing with acute appendicitis, which is the most common problem that faces a pregnant patients with regard to GI uh, emergencies. Thank you very much.